In this video, we'll talk about how to use linear regression to perform a curve fit with a nonlinear mathematical model. After studying this video, you should be able to identify whether or not a nonlinear mathematical model can be linearized and perform the appropriate transformation. Also, you should be able to use MATLAB's polyfit function to fit a nonlinear model to data and use MATLAB to calculate the appropriate measures of the curve fit quality. And we'll get to those last two items with an example. So let's look at some typical nonlinear relationships. Linear regression, recall, is predicated on the assumption that the relationship between the dependent and independent variables is linear. Right, so we said y is equal to some a0 plus a1x. That was our model. And that's how we developed the idea of linear regression. This is not, it's often not an appropriate model for the data. Here's some common examples that are nonlinear. We can have an exponential relationship where we have two constants, alpha 1 and beta 1. y is equal to alpha 1 e to the beta 1x. We can have a power relationship, y is equal to some constant alpha 2 times x to the another constant beta 2. So again, we have two constants, similar to linear regression, where we have two constants, but it's not in a linear form. And saturation growth rate. For this model, we have one constant there, alpha 3, and one constant there, beta 3. Again, two constants, but not in a linear form sometimes these models can be transformed into a linear form and we can still do the curve fit with linear regression. So let's look at examples for these three relationships. And there are other relationships as well. So here's an example we call this linearization of these nonlinear relationships. So if we look at the exponential model, we have that nonlinear relationship y equals alpha 1 e to the beta 1 x. We can linearize that by taking the natural log of both sides, and if we take the natural log of both sides, we can imagine doing a curve fit of a new, call it y prime, and calculating a new, this would be our a0 in our linear regression, and beta 1 would be a1. If we have a power relationship, we can take the log of both sides, and we can do that with a base 10 log like here, or with a natural log and again come up with a y prime and in this case also an x prime so we linearize the data perform the curve fit and then we get our constants a0 and a1 and with the saturation growth rate equation the way that we can linearize this is to basically invert both sides of the equation so we get a y prime it's 1 over y, and then an x prime linearized x data that's 1 over x, and uh, our constants would be a0 and a1. So the basic approach here is to linearize the data. We're going to linearize the data with the appropriate transformation then we're going to do a linear regression with the linearized data and then use the transformation to back out the constants And those constants, again, are those constants alpha and beta. So in this case, we would plot, we would do a linear regression of y natural log of y versus x for the exponential. For the power, we would do log of y versus log of x. And for the saturation growth rate equation, we would do 1 over y versus 1 over x. 
and again other models may be capable of linearization there's no guarantee the key is is can we apply some creative algebra sometimes it's creative algebra to get to some form y equals a0 plus a1x and those what those y and x values are some transformation on the data so let's look at this with an example so here's an example model for growth of bacteria as a function of oxygen concentration and we have some data for C and K where C is the concentration um, of the bacteria and K is the growth rate and so this equation looks kind of like that population growth model and so our first step is to linearize we're going to look at doing a linear transformation and I'm going to start by just inverting both sides since it kind of looks like that population growth rate equation so we'll take 1 over k is equal to cs plus c squared over k max c squared and remember the two constants we're trying to solve for in this curve fit are going to be k max and cs so that's basically our goal is find k max and cs to minimize the sum of the squares of the residuals or minimize the squared Euclidean norm of the residuals so we're on our way there if I then take and break up the right hand side I get 1 over k is equal to cs over k max so that's just uh, times 1 over c squared plus 1 c squared over k max c squared and now these two c squared cancel and so we have a linear relationship now one of 1 over k versus cs over k max now just rearrange this so that we have our constant first so we'll have 1 over k max plus cs over k max times 1 over c squared so in this case we would have a y prime linearized data of 1 over k our a0 is 1 over k max our a1 is cs over k max and our linearized x data is 1 over c squared and now let's look at a MATLAB M file that performs this curve fit so looking at our M file you'll see I've linearized the data in the context here I'm using polyfit like I discussed before and that's a linear fit and we've linearized the data there's the 1 over c squared that's the x prime and here's the 1 over k that's the y prime so I've linearized data inside the polyfit call inside those polyfit inputs and there's no reason to do otherwise because the values of that linearized data aren't useful for anything else besides calculating those coefficients and then the next two lines six and seven are basically just solving for uh, k max using those equations from the previous page so k max is 1 over a naught recall the polynomial coefficients will output in decreasing orders of power so a naught is the same as the second output from that polynomial polyfit vector polyfit function sorry and c s cs is equal to p1 which was a1 over sorry times a1 times k max okay 
So that gives us now our two model coefficients. And then what we'll do is go through and use those to calculate the quality of the fit. So the first thing I'm doing is defining an anonymous function here in line 8 to basically define our model with our calculated curve fit coefficients Kmax1 and Cs1. And it's really important when you're evaluating the quality of the fit that we go back to the nonlinear model before we start calculating those curve fit statistics. So then we'll calculate the sum of the squares of the residuals with respect to the model. And here's the sum of the squares of the residuals with respect to the mean. So again, this is like the sum of E model squared and the sum of E mean squared. And then we'll calculate the R squared value, the standard error. Note we have this is a linear fit, so we have two degrees of freedom. And then to plot the results, what I'm going to do is use a new C vector, and that's for a smooth plot of the model. Because if we just plot our model with our five data points, it would be pretty choppy. So we'll plot the model, and first I'll plot the data as data markers here, and then the model, again using that anonymous function and the rest is just labeling the plot. So let's take a look at our results. So we see um, Kmax came out to 11.19 and CS is 2.509 and R squared is 0.99 so that's pretty darn close to 1 so our initial impression is that seems pretty good and the standard error is 0. 5457. So remember what that means is that our model, our Y predicted, would have a confidence interval uh, of plus or minus, if we say 2 times SYX, that would be 95% confidence that the model is going to predict the data right. So 2 SYX is about 1.1. So let's just take a quick look at that. So YM plus or minus 1.1 should equal our YIs. And if we look here, we see pretty close, definitely good in these first areas. And then we see these residuals are a little bit of outliers. And one other thing you might notice now looking at this curve fit is it doesn't necessarily look like the residuals are equally distributed about the model. Here we had these first three data points are fairly equally distrib distributed about the model, but these two both have uh, both of these data points fall below the curve. And this is one of those qualitative observations that you might make on this curve fit and say, well, yeah, my R squared looks good, my standard error seems okay. Um, but I'm looking at the data and I'm saying, well, there's some something's not quite right here and we're gonna look more into this with some other approaches but the key that's happening here is recall that the fit was with the transformed data and if we go back to the model we look at that transformed data it, we're fitting 1 over K that was our transformed data, 1 over k. So when we go back to calculate k, as k gets larger, and we move out here where k is larger, that fit is not quite as accurate when we go back to the nonlinear model. And we'll talk about this more in an upcoming video.